Yes. Okay. So we are glad to have today Guillaume Vigral from uh, the University Paris Dauphine, uh, who will talk on uh, the structure of the sets of Nash equilibria of finite gains. Uh, it is a great pleasure to introduce Guillaume. Uh, he graduated back in 2009 uh, from uh, Université Paris 6 under the supervision of Sylvain, who is uh, here with us. And he had a uh, significant contribution uh, to uh, stochastic games and to areas in mathematics that are uh, used in stochastic games, like non-expansive mappings and uh, Tauberian theorems. He's uh, a, on the editorial board of, dynamical, dynam of dynamic games and applications. And uh, so it is a great pleasure to have him today. So Guillaume, uh, the screen is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Ilan, for the nice introduction. And uh, I want to thank uh, all the organizers for the invitation, of course. So I'll talk about structure of uh, sets of Nash equilibria and uh, some applications uh, to the complexity of some uh, decision problems. OK, so uh, and please, uh, I have way too many slides. OK, I know for sure that I won't uh, talk uh, about all of them. And then I can stop. Uh, at uh, a lot of different points. Okay, so please ask questions uh, as you see fit, and uh, it's no problem if uh, we we go a long time on some side. On, on some side. Okay, so first of all, just uh, some uh, few slides for uh, just for fixing uh, notations. Okay, so in this talk, I will be only interested in finite games and only in one shot games. Okay, so just standard games with uh, n players finite number of players also, uh, greater than two, and usually greater than three. Uh, this finite set of actions will be denoted by AI. Uh, the cardinal will be KI. And the pair of functions will be uh, GI. And uh, since we will be interested in some uh, computational prob uh, problems, uh, it will make sense uh, often to assume that the game is given with uh, payoffs that are integers. And uh, we will always uh, speak about the game played with uh, mixed actions. Okay, and of course, players want to maximize their, their payoff. Okay, and the, the concept of solution we will be interested in is a classical mixed uh, Nash equilibrium. Okay, no surprise here. So just recall what I, I want to, to show you a bit what look like uh, a set of uh, equilibria or a set of uh, equilibrium payoffs of some finite uh, game played in this section. So uh, it will be denoted by NE or NEP for respectively Nash equilibria and uh, Nash equilibrium uh, payoffs. Okay, so the set of Nash equilibria of some game, you can write it this way. It's a set of X that are in the product of simplices. So that for each player and for each possible deviation, his payoff is greater than his payoff if he had a deviate. Okay, so it look in, in practice, if you write it for some simple game, or so here we just have a battle of sexes, it looks like this. Okay, you have a set of inequalities and equalities involving it integers, since they were integers in the, uh, in the matrix. And uh, okay. here everything is affine, okay, because there are two players, but it can be a polynomial if there are more players. Okay, so what can we say in general about such sets? So this set, is a Nash equilibrium or Nash equilibrium payoffs, they are always compact, okay, close and bounded, it's very clear. They are always non-empty, so it's uh, of course uh, due to Nash, and they are always semi-algebraic. So what does it mean? A set is semi-algebraic if it's finite dimensional, and if it's possible to write it as a finite union and intersection of sets of the form either p of something is uh, less or equal to zero or strictly less than zero. Okay, where p is a polynomial, a multivariate polynomial uh, in the different probabilities of uh, the player plays x action. Uh, okay, so of course you can also have equalities by writing the two uh, reversed uh, inequalities. Okay, so and as you can see from the previous slide, okay, it's just you write the definition of a Nash, uh, the set of all Nash equilibria, it will involve inequalities and it will involve polynomials in the different probabilities. Okay, there will be some products, so it's not uh, fine, it's polynomials. So it will be semi algebraic. 
and for the set of Nash equilibrium payoffs. It's the image of uh, this algebraic set by G, which is a polynomial, the, the payoff function. And so by a classical theorem by Tarski and Sadelberg, it is also uh, semi algebraic Okay, and uh, in fact, when uh, the, uh, the game was given with payoffs that are integers, the set are even what, uh, what I will call Z semi algebraic, which means that all the coefficients of the polynomial are in Z. Okay, and so a uh, natural question, I think, is uh, the uh, whisper. Okay, when you have a set, is it possible to find some game such that E is a set of equilibria of this game or the set of equilibrium payoffs of this game? So I will give you uh, several uh, results uh, later on, but uh, the simplest one to state, I think, is this one. So for example, if there are at least three players, so this is extremely important, if you have a set that is of dimension n, then it is a set of Nash equilibrium payoff of some finite game with n players, if and only if it is non-empty, compact, and semi-algebraic. Okay, so one implication was the previous slide. And the next slide, the, the result is uh, the other uh, implication. And in the case where uh, the game is with integral payoff, okay, it's, uh, uh, sorry, it's, uh, the, the other one around. In the case where the set is Z semi-algebraic, semi okay, if it's given with polynomial involving uh, integers, then you can find a game that in addition is with payoffs that are integers. Okay, so everything I said in the previous slide uh, is uh, the, the reverse is, uh, is also true if n is uh, greater or equal to three. Okay, and I will talk uh, during a lot of uh, uh, during a, a big part of this talk of in fact implication of uh, these kinds of uh, results. Okay, so let me give motivation and implication. Uh, so here in this slide. Okay, so. What it means basically is that semi-algebraic compact uh, non-expansive sets are exactly the same object up to some transformation that uh, finite games with at least three players. Okay, so for example, a theoretical, uh, can canonical in some way certificate of non-emptiness of a semi-algebraic compact set is that it is the set of Nash equilibrium payoff of some game. So this is uh, from a theoretical uh, viewpoint, but I think it has interesting applications. So for example, uh, it's well known that if you write an optimization problem on the convex set, it's the same as, as uh, uh, an optimization problem involving convection shock. Okay, you can go from one to zero. Here, it's a bit the same thing. If you want to, uh, I don't know, minimize something on a semi-algebraic set, you can always, on a non-empty semi-algebraic set, Compact set, you can always write this as some game theoretic question to minimize something on the set of Nash equilibria of some game. Okay, and vice versa. And the main thing I will talk about today is that it has implication on the complexity of some decision problems on games. Okay, so what is a decision problem? For me today, a decision problem is a question on a game for which the answer is either yes or no. Okay, so I won't talk at all about things like finding the Nash equilibria, a Nash equilibria of some game. Okay, the answer is not yes or no. Okay, the decision problem we have is something like, are there more than one Nash equilibria? Is there one Nash equilibrium which gives a payoff greater than zero to the first player? Thing like this. Okay. And the main message I want to give in this talk is that the, uh, how much these uh, decision problems are hard depends very much on the number of players. In fact, it depends whether you have two players or three. There is a big gap of complexity between what happens for two players, non-zero sub, and what happens for three players. And after, the, the complexity stays the same. A five-player game is as simple as a three-player game, but it's much more complex than a two-player. So far, so good, no questions? Okay, so first of all, let me speak a bit 
as a bit as a kind of benchmark about the two player case. Okay, so nothing is new in what I will say, but it will be interesting later on when we will compare it to what happens with three or more players. Okay, so first of all, so I will give two, uh, there will be two kinds of uh, results: some results about structure of equilibria or payoffs equilibria, and uh, some uh, results on complexity. And I will do the same thing later for three player games. Okay, so what can we say about the structure of equilibria when we restrict yourself ourselves to two player games, non zero sum? So, first of all, it's very easy to prove that every two player game with payoffs that are integers admit an equilibrium, a mixed equilibrium. Uh, is, I will not say it always, but it's always mixed. You know, so. so, you always have an equilibrium where each player plays each action with a rational probability. In the same way, you can prove that there is always an equilibrium which gives a rational payoff for each pay. Okay, so there, there exists simple solutions to a two player game. And in the reverse, for if you fix a, a pair of rational numbers, you can construct a two player game where, where payoffs are integers, which has a unique equi mixed equilibrium. And where the payoff is the couple E for the first and the second pair. Okay, this is very easy. I think you only need two actions per pair. And the fourth point, so the, the first three points were really easy. So this one is not. So it's in fact possible to characterize uh, the set of Nash equilibrium payoff of two player games. Okay, and it has, it has nothing to do with what I said for three players, it's totally different. Okay, so a set is a, in R2 is a set of Nash equilibrium payoffs of some two player game if, in a, if it is a finite union of sets of the form AB times CD. Okay, so it's like uh, rectangles, but that, that are uh, uh, oriented uh, in the way you, you want uh, them to be, okay, not uh, like this, not in diagonal. Okay, so, so this is due to Lever, Solan, and Yosa. And in fact, so I don't think they, you prove it, uh, Elon, but it's exactly the same proof. Uh, if uh, you add uh, as hypothesis that the game is with uh, payoffs that are integers, uh, then the set is it's exactly the same thing, except the extreme points of each rectangle with, will have a rational product. Okay. Okay, so this is the, the results on the, on the structure. So what can you say now of the complexity of decision problems in the two-player case? So if you have uh, if you have to solve some uh, decision problem about two-player games, that is non-trivial, okay? Of course, if you uh, is the question is is there an equilibrium? The answer is yes, it's not a problem. But if it's uh, non-trivial and you ask a natural question, chances are the problem will be NP complex. So I will recall in the next two slides what this means. But just let me uh, give some uh, some example of some uh, of this kind of uh, decision problems. Okay, so all, all of this is uh, due to uh, Gilboa and Zemel in uh, eighty nine. Okay, there are more 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 uh, examples than what I, I give here. It's only some, some examples. Okay, so some natural decision problems are, are these uh, problems. Okay, is there at least two Nash equilibrium in this game? Is there a Nash equilibrium with positive payoff for everyone? Or for just player one, uh, is there a Nash equilibrium in which each player plays his first action with probability zero, or with a positive probability, or with a probability one half, or whatever? Okay, all these kind of problems, there will be NP complete, NP complete. So, so let me recall or explain what NP completeness means. Okay, so first of all, I want I, I have to explain what is NP. So uh, a decision problem, okay, it's in NP. So if, first of all, if it's in P, if you can solve it in polynomial time with a Turing machine, okay, Turing machine is just an algorithm, a computer program, a usual computer program, okay, that is P. So NP is something slightly larger, okay? So N does not mean non-polynomial, okay? It means non-deterministic. It means you can solve it in a polynomial time with a non-deterministic Turing machine. So basically, 
it's a computer program that has branches. Okay, it can, it can decide something at some point, and it always takes a good decision. Okay, another way to see it that I find more useful to understand is that you can verify that there is a solution using certificates. Okay, so something is in NP. If you have a deterministic train machine, so a usual algorithm, that take into entry two things. First of all, the input of your problem, so here uh, a game, but also something else, some certificates. So I will give an example in one second uh, with respect to the, the previous slide. Okay, so it will take into input some X, which is an, uh, an input of the problem, and some certificate Y. And it will, it will answer yes or no in polynomial time. Okay, it's the usual algorithm. And what is the role of the certificate? Well, you want that if the answer to your problem is no for X, to your initial problem, then whatever certificate you give, the Turing machine and the couple will say, no, this is not a valid certificate of a solution for your problem, for, for the input X. And on the reverse, if the answer to the initial problem was yes, for some X, then there is at least one certificate of size reasonable, size that is polynomial in uh, X, such that the answer uh, that the uh, joint Turing machine gives is yes for this particular certificate. Okay, so let me explain this on the previous slide, for example, on the first point. How can you prove that this is in NP? Well, the set of certificates will be the set of all couples of mixed profiles. Okay. And what happens? What will the Turing machine do? It will take into input a game and a couple of mixed profiles. And it will check if, if this, are these two profiles different from each other and are they both Nash equilibrium? Okay. All of this can be done quickly because you just have to, uh, uh, to check if there are uh, unilateral pure deviation. Okay? So it can be done quickly in the size of X and Y. Okay? And so if the answer here is yes, there will be one certificate, which is a couple of uh, such answers. And you can verify in polynomial time that it is an answer. And if uh, the, the answer is no, for even if, pair of profile you give, either it will be the same Nash equilibrium or one of them will not be, at least will not be a Nash equilibrium. Okay, so it's, that's why it's in. So I want to stress one important point, okay, because where is the fact that there are two and not three players here important? It's not really apparent in what I said, right? It's very important that the size of a valid, that there is a valid certificate, certificate that is with reasonable size. And it is what is crucial here about two-player games. Okay, two-player games. They are if they have uh, two Nash equilibria, they have two Nash equilibria that are of, so, of some smalls that are uh, first of all uh, given by rational numbers, and that are of size that is not too big with respect to the size of uh, your uh, game. Okay, the size of the game being given by the number of actions, the size of the integers in uh, each uh, uh, in, in, the, in uh, all the payoffs and so on. Okay, so this won't be true for, for three or more players. That is the point. Okay. Okay, so this is a, a class of uh, decision problem. Okay, and to be very clear, if it was not, being in NP means that you're a simple problem. Okay, it means that there are some kind of, of uh, non-deterministic Turing machines that can solve you. Okay, so it means that you're not too hard. Okay, and it can be shown it's not hard to prove that the, the things that are in NP contains P and con so the, all, all uh, problems that can be solved in polynomial times and is contained in the, in the, the set of problems that can be solved in exponential time. So this is NP. If, if there is any question, please interrupt me at any point so once again. Yes, Guillaume, if I might. Yes, yes. Uh, so you need a deterministic or non-deterministic uh, machine? 
It depends. Okay, I, I gave two definitions. The first of all is not really a definition because I, I did not really see really say, say what non-deterministic Turing machine is. Okay, so it's for the name. It's mainly to extra, explain the head. So forget the first two lines if you want. So now my, my Turing machine is deterministic, but it's not on X. You give two things. You give your problem and a certificate. Okay, so if you if I go back to this, to, to my algorithm, I don't give just a game. And you will say, yeah, yes, it has two Nash equilibria. I give a game and two candidates to be different Nash equilibria. And it says, yes, you're right. It's a, it, they are different and they are both Nash equilibria. And it's, it, it can do it de deterministically and quickly. Okay, but you need the equilibrium. Uh, you need the certificate. So. Does that, does that answer the question? Uh, yeah, my, yeah, thank you. It was just that on the first line you have non-deterministic and then you define deterministic, that, that's why I... Yes, it's not deterministic, it fits just on X. Okay, thank you. Okay. But you have to define exactly what is not deterministic to a machine that I don't want to, so I prefer to, to explain it this way. Any other question? No. Okay, so now to explain what is NP complete, I, I, I have to explain also what is NP hard, which is kind of the reverse of NP. Okay, so first of all, one has to understand what, it, what it, does it mean to be reducible. So we say that the decision problem A is reducible to another problem B. Basically, if you can uh, solve A quickly when you have B as a black box, okay? You want a function f that you can compute quickly, such that for any input x of your original problem a, to check if a is true, you only have to check if b of f of x is true. Okay. So what does it mean? It means that if you can solve b quickly, then you can also solve a quickly by using b as a black box as I just said. Okay. So it basically is some kind of partial order on the, uh, decision problems. Okay, it's re you are reducible to something is you are at least as simple as this. Okay, and, and one says that a decision problem is NP hard if all problems in NP are re reducible to P. So basically it means that you are harder than every problem in NP. And you are NP complete, if you are both in NP and NPR. Okay, so maybe I should uh, take a blackboard. Okay, you can do it like this. So you have P here. Okay, so it's very simple. It's a set of problems you can solve in polynomial time. If you are here, you have NP. Here you have NP hard. And here you have NP complete. Okay. And so this uh, notion of NP completeness is uh, studied a lot. Uh, why? Because at some point, I think in the 70s, uh, people. Uh, realized that there was a lot of different uh, very natural problems that were in this class that were equivalent to each other okay so for example the, for example the traveling salesman problem so you have some points and uh, and some real and you want to uh, check if there is a path that go to each point that with that is of length smaller than the uh, the integer of the real you what well, not the real the integer of the rational you, you have okay some problem in logic uh, zero sum subset, okay, you have a, a set of integers, you want to, to know if there is a subset that is a sum of some zero, so problem, some problem in graph and so on, okay, there are hundreds of problems that are empty. Okay, and so basically what Gilboa and uh, Zemel proved is that a lot of problems concerning two player games are in the same case. Okay. Okay, maybe some things that I should have said also is that the same kind of problems on zero sum games, are in P, okay, because they choose linear program. Okay, so basically, this is a realm of 
zero sum game. And this is two player games. So John, uh, before the start of the talk was saying that uh, I would say that anything uh, in mathematics can uh, be prove, uh, can be proved using game theory. Well, there is an extremely important uh, problem in uh, computational theory, which is, uh, is P equals to NP, okay? And this problem basically says, is it true that the uh, two-player games have the same degree of complexity that zero-sum two-player games because of, uh, of this, uh, what I just said, okay? It's, uh, it's basically what 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 is uh, the issue in P or NP? If you want to say it as a as a game theoretical uh, problem. Okay, so this was for two players. Are there any questions? No. So let's talk a bit about three players now. So. What do we know first about uh, stru structure of equilibrium? So all I said basically for two player games is not true anymore. A three player game with integer payoff, it may not, it may not have any equilibrium, equilibrium with rational payoffs, okay? It's, it's, what, it's due to Nash, uh, so it immediately. You can prove on the, uh, that there is at least one equilibrium where each payoff, each player has a payoff that is an algebraic number. Okay, not a rational, but an algebraic. And there is some kind of partial inverse result by Bubelis, which says that if you take an algebraic number, there is a three player game with payoffs that are integers, which admits a unique Nash equilibrium and in which the player of the first, first player is this algebraic number. Okay. It says nothing about the, player, the payoff of player two and three. Okay, what can we say now really on the structure of uh, the set of equilibria or if, of equilibrium payoffs? So as I said, it's always non-empty, so my algebra can compact. And there are a lot of different results, so I probably did not put uh, every, all the results here, uh, that, gi that give some kind of uh, partial index. Okay, so a very nice result is due to uh, data in the 2003. That says that if you consider not semi algebraic set, but algebraic set, then any algebraic set is isomorphic for some sense of isomorphic that I want to take to the set of completely mixed equilibrium of some three player. Another result due to Balkenborg and Vermeulen is that every semi algebraic compact connected set is homeomorphic to one connected component of the set of equilibria of some. And a result uh, found independently by uh, Yannick Yossa and myself and uh, John in uh, 2016, every semi-algebraic compact and empty set is the projection of the set of equilibrium payoffs of some game with strictly more than n points. Okay, and there are related results also on the set of equilibria set of the set of equilibrium payoffs. Okay, so all these results say more or less that there is some kind of universality of three player games with respect to uh, semi-algebraic uh, compact uh, non empty sets, okay? But each time you see that it's modulo something, okay? You have to project something or you, or you have to, to, to use an isomorphism, an onomorphism or something, you have to, to change a bit the, the shape of your, uh, your semi-algebraic set. Okay, so let me explain now that some new inverse results. So the simplest one is the one in the middle that I already told you about uh, before. But you can also have uh, results on equilibria, so this is the last one, or uh, uh, a generalization of Bubelis. This is the first one, okay? Uh, both, so both, in fact, are used, the first and the third point are used in the proof of the second one, in fact. So the first point is that if you take any uh, tuple of algebraic numbers, 
Then you can construct an L player game, which has a unique equilibrium, and its payoff is E1, E2, uh, EN. Okay, so Blue Bellies did this, but only for the first player. Okay, here yeah, it's for all players. So the second result is uh, on uh, uh, the set of uh, payoffs, okay, the, the one I gave before. And you have you can also prove some results, some related results on the set of equilibria. Okay, if you give if you have something that is non-empty compact some algebraic, and it which is in zero one to the end, then you can construct a game such that the tuple E is in E, if and only if there is an equilibrium of this game in which each player plays his third action with probability E. Okay, so basically, what does it mean? It means you take the set of equilibria of this game gamma and you project it only on the first action of each player. Okay, it will give you uh, an apple or three apple if you are only three, player, three players. And this thing will be exactly the set E that you had at the beginning. Okay, so uh, yes, I should have written everywhere, everywhere in big and in red that it is for at least three players. Guillaume? Yes. Can I ask a question about the third result? Yes. Uh, it is written there, zero, one, excluding one? Yes. Okay. But Good it question. should be compact? Yes, it, it, I, I said it's in zero, one, two, zero. Okay. Okay. But you, you, you can't have one, okay? Uh, it's not hard to find a counterexample if uh, you close in one. Okay, the issue is that basically here, if you, we, you can add a lot of actions and give uh, that will uh, that will be placed with some probability. Okay, but if you you close one, then you can you can't place these actions. Okay, and so you 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 are too constrained. And one important thing for what I will tell in a, in a minute about uh, consequences in, uh, uh, in computation is that the proof are constructed, okay? And the games are not too large in the size of the proof. Okay, I have to be uh, a bit technical here, I think, to not cheat you. Because the, the issue is that uh, if you give me a semi-algebraic set, Maybe it's not trivial at all that it's bonded or that it's closed or that it's non empty. Okay. And in fact, the whole point of this talk is that it's very hard if you have some semi algebraic set to decide whether it is empty or not. So, and I want it to be non empty because, of course, it's my semi algebraic set is empty. I can't do anything. I can't have a game which has it as its set of. Uh, Equilibria or equilibrium pairs. Okay. And I don't want at all at the beginning of my algorithm to, to find something that is uh, in this, to, to do a sub algorithm that finds something that is in this semi algebraic set. Because if I do this, I have to verify that it's on empty and it will take me a lot of time. And so for every result about the computation, it, it will be useless. Okay. So what, has, uh, what I ask is that I have certificates. Okay. So basically, if you me, as uh, my job is to transform uh, semi-algebraic sets to games, okay? But I return on my shop, I only can transform games that are compact, semi-algebraic, non-empty. So you have, if you come to my shop, I, I can transform your uh, set, but you have to prove me that it satisfies this condition, okay? How will you, you do that? So you will give me a semi-algebraic set, okay? So it will be a union and intersection of some set of the form uh, PK of X is less than zero. And I don't want yet that you give me something with a strict inequality. Because if that's the case, I can't prove that it's, that it's closed. Maybe it's closed, but I, I don't. So to be sure that it's closed, you are only allowed to give me uh, weak inequalities, first of all. You have to give me some bond and claim that this is a bond on uh, your uh, set. And you have to give me an element of your set. What will be an element of your set? An issue here is that you have some, uh, some Z semi-algebraic sets that contains no uh, rational number. 
Okay, so I, I, I can't ask you to give me some uh, tuple of rational numbers that, are, that is in this. So I, I want you that you give me some tuple of algebraic numbers. Okay, how do you give me a, an algebraic number? You give me a polynomial of some degree and some interval of some, le of some length. And you say that it is the unique zero of this polynomial in, uh, in this uh, interval. If you give me all of this, I will construct a game such that the set of Nash equilibrium is not E. It's what? It's the union of your, the singleton that you gave me and of the intersection of E and some uh, square, some big square. Okay, so this thing will always be bonded, non-empty, and closed. Okay, because of C of E and the fact that there are weak inequalities. And if the certificate you gave me are correct, this is your problem, then this will be exactly E. Okay, because the intersection here will be E since E is bonded by C, and the union will be E since the small E is in uh, capital. Okay, so it's your job to give me valid certificates. And if you give me valid certificates, I construct a game so that the set of Nash equilibrium is exact. Okay, and the the size will be not too uh, large, meaning that the number of actions of each player and the size of the pure payoffs, okay, so the bit lengths of the payoffs, will be some polynomial in all the data, okay, which is the number of polynomials, uh, the degree of polynomials, uh, uh, the number of players. I think it's not important here, in fact. Uh, the, and the size of the different integers M and C. Okay, so the, the bit size of the Okay, is it clear? Okay, and with these results, in fact, you can prove, so you can recover so, some already known results and prove other ones. Then if you have three players or more, it will be the same. Then the same type of decision problems on games with integral payoffs are now no, no more NP complete, but something else I will explain in the next slide, which is exists R complete. Okay, so let me give you uh, some examples, but it's basically the same as before. Okay, are there at least two Nash equilibrium in this game? Uh, are there, is there a Nash equilibrium with a payoff greater than some rational for each player or for uh, one player? Okay, so all of this was uh, proved uh, by Bilo and uh, Mavro Nicolas in 2016, okay, for uh, that it exists are complete. And some new results include uh, same questions as the second one, but greater than a given algebraic number, like square root of two, something like this. Or something more general, you take any uh, summary algebra, this summary algebraic set, so like you know, a ball, uh, an hyperplane, what you want, something, and you, uh, and of course, you want it to be neither empty or everything, or the answer will be trivial. And you ask, is there a Nash equilibrium with a payoff in this? Okay, and there are also, if uh, you can also uh, prove the same thing for problems not on Nash equilibrium, but on uh, uh, the probability that so, uh, not on Nash equilibrium payoff, sorry, but on the probability that some uh, actions are played are equilibrium. Okay, for example, is there a Nash equilibrium in which each player or some player plays his first action or his first two action with some fixed probability or with probability greater than something or what you want. So all of this will be in this other complexity class, which is exists exists R. So of course I have to explain what it is. Well, basically it's exactly the complexity class of deciding whether this summary algebraic set is non empty. Okay, and compact or not doesn't change anything to the complexity. So a decision problem is in exists A if one can reduce it to deciding whether this summary algebraic set is non empty. Okay, so if it's simpler than, this, than the non emptiness decision on the summary algebraic set, it is on the converse exists A hard. If it's harder than deciding whether a set, uh, this summary algebraic set is non empty, and it's complete for this, it exists are complete if it's inverse. Okay, and once again, 
this thing is between p and x tag. In fact, it's between np and x tag. There is at least one strict inclusion, of course, because p is not the same thing that uh, poly uh, polynomial and exponential are not the same thing. Uh, but in between, I think everyone believes, or well, most people believe that there are, that these are three uh, strict inclusions, but uh, the one. Okay, so if uh, I go back to uh, this, okay, it means that now I have something else so here. Okay, this is exists R. All that is outside is exists R complete. And this is, uh, no, exists R, R, sorry. Uh, can I do this? Yes. Okay, and this is three, three or more. Player games. Okay, so this class, of course, is uh, the, uh, less known that NP uh, complete. Okay, probably, probably you never heard about it, but it's still uh, quite studied in uh, computational theory. So let me just give uh, two uh, simple examples of uh, decision problems that are in the same class. Okay, one is called the hard gallery problem. Okay, you have a non convex polygon, you have some number of guards. And you want to know if you can place this guard in some point such that every point on each wall is viewed by at least one guard. And so no one can throw a soup on a, a bandit. The other problem is a realization of a graph with edges of fixed lengths. Okay, so you have some graph, some abstract graph, and you want to know, you, and you have some lengths, and you want to know if you can represent it in the plane such that the edges have some fixed lengths in that direction. Okay, so if you have a triangle, it's very easy. It's just uh, triangular inequalities, but in general, it's very complex. It's uh, in this, uh, uh, in this uh, complexity class. Okay, so why is it true that, why are these complexity results true? Well, because of the structure results, okay? Basically, the structure results say that Equilibria, equilibrium pay, set of equilibrium payoffs of games are exactly the same six as uh, non empty semi algebraic sets. And so we can translate a uh, question on one on the other. So let me do it quickly. Okay. So, uh, for example, I will compare uh, deciding whether a game has an equilibrium in which the first player has a payoff of square root of two. I will prove that, is, that it is, exists R. Okay. So, why is it simpler? Well, this is uh, not hard. It's just that if you have an n-player game, okay, you can uh, uh, you you have its set of equilibria, okay. You can write it easily. It's a semi-algebraic set. You can write now the set E prime, which is a, the set of couples E and F, when E is an equilibrium and F is a corresponding payoff. It will also be semi-algebraic. Okay, and then if you have a black box that uh, can decide if a semi-algebraic set is empty, you just consider this semi-algebraic set, okay? It's E prime. I intersect it with a set where the first coordinate of uh, F squared is two and is both strictly positive, okay? And of course, this set is, is uh, non-empty if and only if there is uh, an equilibrium in which the first player has a payoff, which is square root of two. Okay, so if I have a, a black box that can decide if a set is a semi-algebraic set is empty or not, then I can decide if a game has an equilibrium in which the first player has a payoff of square root of two. Okay, so the reverse is uh, more complicated. So now assume that I have a black box that uh, says whether a game has an equilibrium in which the first player has a payoff of square root of two. And I have a semi-algebraic set and I want to know if it's empty or not. 
Okay, so first of all, for technical reasons that are non-trivial, you can assume that the somatic algebraic set is compact. Okay, I don't want to go uh, into details about this. Okay, so let's assume it's compact. And consider now this set. I take zero, I, I, I add one dimension, okay, so I will be in dimension L plus one, and I'll take zero, and I take the union of the, of the origin and of the set square root of two times E. Okay, this set is compact and semi-algebraic because E was, it's not empty because zero is in it there, in it, okay? So what I can construct gamma, which is a reasonable size, such that the set of Nash equilibrium payoffs is exactly E prime. And now I, I ask my black, my black box, is it true that there is a Nash equilibrium in which uh, the first player gains a payoff of square root of two? Okay, it's square root of two is not zero, okay? So if there is, there is something which has an equilibrium in which the first player gains square root of two, if and only if E was non empty. And so I can answer to uh, the question uh, of the non emptiness of it. Okay, and if, in fact, everything, uh, all, of the, all of this decision problem, you can think uh, more or less this, this way. Okay, so how I don't have any clock. How much time does I have? Well, first of all, if there is any question, of course. You have 10 minutes for the end of the hour, but then we okay, can follow minutes. away in discussion. Yeah. Okay, but is so now I can give uh, just an intuition about why the structure result holds, but maybe is a question on uh, uh, the complexity parts you can ask now if you want. No? Okay. So, of course, uh, the question, the big question is why is it true? Why, why are three player games different than two player games? Okay, so in fact, that it's known for, for a long time, okay, uh, that, there, that a lot of things are different for two and, and three players, but why? So let me explain here what happens. Basically, if you have only two players and you want, and you have some set, you, you have some set and you want to realize it as a set of Nash equilibrium or Nash equilibrium payoffs, you will be extremely restricted because if you write uh, in different conditions of things like this, of course, the, the, when one, one player decides something, decides if he prefers uh, some action to one other, the only thing he can take into account is the probability that the other players, or the other player, if there are two players, do. Okay, so if there is only two players, you won't, you will not you won't be able to do multiplications, for example. Okay, everything will always have the degree one. So maybe let me explain how you can do multiplications when you have at least three players. Okay, so call pij the probability that player i plays its action j in some equilibrium, and assume that. We, we are in uh, the, the we are constructing a game. Okay, we are, we are given some set E and we are constructing. Assume that we have constru we are constructing two particular strategies such so that the first one gives a payoff of one if player two plays this case action, and else gives a payoff of zero, whatever all the other players. And the other one gives a payoff of one if player two plays this E sections and player three plays his uh, J section, and else gave a, give a payoff of zero. And assume that for some reason we have proved that in any equilibrium, these two actions are played with positive probability. So if they are both played, it means that they give the same payoff. Okay, the payoff of the first one is the probability that player two plays its K section and the probability of the second one is a product of the priorities that player two plays is E section and the priorities that player three plays is G section, is J section. Okay, so that, that is how you can have products. Okay, and so it, if, for those who know the, 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 the paper by, by data, it's uh, similar to uh, what she does in her paper. 
and so you can do multiplication, but you can only do multiplication of different pairs, okay? Because here, I cannot say I have a pair of one if player two plays his, his, his i section and also player two plays another action, right? Okay, it has to be two different pairs. Okay, so I, I can do square here. How can I do square? Well, you can now consider other actions, okay? Assume also that among all actions of player one, we consider two other ones, such as the first one give a pay of one if player two plays his i section, and else a payoff of zero. And the other one gives a payoff of one if player three plays uh, j, uh, j section, and else a payoff of zero. Then pi2 has to be equal to pj3. Okay, uh, two and three are not uh, exponents, so it's uh, just uh, the number of the player. Okay, and if you, you, if you combine this thing to the previous one, which said that pk2 was pi2 times pj3, since these two things are in any equilibrium with some support, this thing has to be true, and also this thing has to be true. And so if you combine it, you have that in any equilibrium with some support, the priority that player two plays his k section is the priority that he plays his i section squared. Okay, and of course, you can do this over and over. So neither this slide or the previous slide was possible with only two players. Okay, here, if you want to do a multiplication of player two and player three, you use the indifferent condition of player one, which has to be different to both players. Okay, so you can do a multiplication. So that is why when you have only two players, everything will be affine. Okay, remember that you had the rectangles in the structure of the theorem by uh, Lehrer Solanius. And also, in fact, you can't even have some equalities involving two different players. Here also, I needed player one to, cut, to write something like this. That is why in for, uh, two players, you only have straight lines that are vertical or horizontal. It's not possible to have a game such that uh, a two player game such that the set of Nash equilibrium payoff is the bisectus. The BC2, okay, it will be horizontal or vertical. Okay, so using this kind of arguments, okay, you can construct monomials, okay, and using once again in different conditions, you can uh, have uh, inequality polynomial inequalities involving the probability that each player plays is uh, uh, some of these actions. Okay, and this is how inductively uh, you can uh, uh, construct the game. So, just three minutes. So, of course, it's just a very crude uh, uh, idea. Okay, so it's a bit tricky to, de to do intersection and unions. And the, the most tricky part, in fact, is that. Here I talk about what happened. I, I assume that player, players played some action with positive probability. And you have to uh, you have to show this. Okay. And in fact, this is where the fact that it's non-empty uh, is used. There will be two two kinds of equilibria, some that we, that that will be placed with some given support, okay, which will give you the set E, which was given uh, uh, by the guy who came to the shop. And there, there will be exactly one other equilibrium, which is not of the same support, uh, uh, which will give you uh, as a payoff the, the small e uh, that was given as a proof of non emptiness. Okay. So I, I don't have time to do the rest, but if you want, I, I think it will be on, uh, on the website. So uh, there is so, uh, a, a more detailed. Uh, explanation of how to do this. Okay, so just in two minutes, maybe a, a conclusion and a perspectives. Okay, so something that I find uh, very interesting, but I think also hard, uh, is uh, to have some uh, same kind of results with some parameters. Okay, I, I don't even know what would be the, really the, the result, but I basically assume that now I, I don't have a set, but I have a function. Okay, I have a function that takes some parameter, maybe some real parameter, 
and that, and that give me uh, some uh, semi algebraic sets given the parameter. Okay, so it's a, a correspondence. And I want to construct an entire game which is parameterized so that the payoff depends in some way on the parameter k. Okay, maybe in some, maybe when each player plays his first action, the payoff is of uh, first player is k, for example, something like this. And I want that the set of Nash equilibrium payoff, gamma of k, is exactly my set f of k. Okay, and what, so it would be some kind of generalization. Why is it interesting? I think it's because one would then uh, be able to uh, use it for dynamic games, for example, stochastic games, which is something I'm very much interested in, uh, because the dynamic programming operator is, is given by some static game in which some payoffs depend on the estimation of the future. Think, about, think of a quitting game, if you want, for the simple, clean the case, simplest case. Okay, so maybe this way it's possible to construct a lot of different uh, weird, uh, Uh, stochastic games that have uh, some weird set of uh, of equilibria. Uh, some question also is what happens with uh, games with infinite number of actions. So I think John has a result on, on this. Okay, so for example, where actions are interval or payoffs are semi-algebraic function and payoffs are semi-algebraic functions, things like this. And uh, Last thing, uh, so I, I, I couldn't uh, talk in detail about the construction, but the game uh, are quite degenerate, okay, because there are uh, a lot of weakly uh, dominant threat strategies. Uh, this, uh, but even so, of course, you have to do this because you want. It's not a generic result. Uh, all results here are general, so you more or less have to have to have it because sometimes the set E will be some weird infinite set, but it would be nice given some finite sets with odd cardinality to be able to construct a simple, not, generate, not degenerate game, such that E is its set of Nash equilibrium payoff. Okay, and uh, in particular, uh, I should have written it, uh, a game which is with uh, coordinates integers. Okay, it's not easy at all because E may, may, may uh, it's not, E may have only non-rational, okay, so, To construct such a game that has, a, I don't know, a three player game that has a three, uh, exactly three equilibrium with uh, some payoff. And each time the payoff is a product of three algebraic number. I have no idea how to, I, I know how to construct this, but only using weakly dominated strategies. And it should be possible to do it uh, in a non degenerate way, but uh, I don't know how to do it. And that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guillaume. Other questions? So Guillaume, if I can ask uh, one question, one simple sure. one. Um, suppose you take the set of Nash equilibria of the game and you consider the equilibrium with uh, where the sum of payoffs is maximal. Can you yes. identify the point in the semi-algebraic set, which is equivalent to that equilibrium, which correspond to it? Okay, so, okay, so is it a different type of decision problem? Because now the answer will not be yes, it will be something. So, I, okay, I didn't look at this, but I guess so. Uh, so, the, yes, yeah, this, this should be equivalent to maximize some linear function in the case on the semi-algebraic set. Mm -hmm. And so what is the complexity of this? I don't know. But probably it's, uh, it's something that it's a complexity class that exists, I guess, maximizing things, things on semi-algebraic semi sets. Yes, yes, because of course I, I Of course, I understand your question from a practical point of view. Yes, you want to, to find the best Nash equilibrium in some sense, for example, mm -hmm. this one. Yeah. One way to do it that, that, that is not very good is to, for, for a threshold, you ask, is there one that is greater than this? And you, you do this for all threshold. Okay, so you can have something like this. But of course, it will not be very efficient. 
I guess. Um, Goyom, can you go back to the slide just before the slide where you define the uh, problem exists? Uh, yeah, this one. Yeah. I don't have a question per se, but I wanted to get a better look at it. <laughs> sure, sure. I've taken a screenshot so you can discuss other questions with other people. Yeah, I, I think the slides will be on the website, no? Usually I think that. So. The talk goes up at some point, uh, the whole okay. talk, yes, but. Uh, Uh, Guillaume, if I if I may, um, yes. So probably my questions could be off because I'm I'm not uh, at all uh, familiar with this area, uh, and I was just wonder. Well, first of all, I was uh, thank you for your very very clear uh, um, pedagogical presentation. Um, I was wondering two things, and you you feel free to dismiss my questions. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, for um, has anyone looked at uh, refinements? Any of the refinements? Has anyone asked the same questions for refinements of Nash equilibrium? I don't know, proper trembling hand. And uh, the second question is I uh, was wondering how uh, uh, different Bayesian games would be. So could we ask, you know, if we ask the same questions for Bayesian games? Okay, so these are both uh, excellent questions. Uh, the first one, uh, I, I don't know. And what I did will, will, will not be of great help, I think, uh, because uh, of what I said about a lot of uh, degeneracy, a lot of uh, weakly dominated strategies. Okay, so I think it's quite a different beast to study uh, proper equilibria or things like this. Uh, and uh, Bayesian game, I didn't look at. I, I looked a bit at what, at what happens for like uh, sub game perfect uh, uh, for a game with perfect uh, observation. Okay, and it's quite messy uh, already for two players. Oh, it's very interesting. Um, I uh, vaguely remember that speaking of SPE and perfect information games, there was a paper some time ago. One of the authors was uh, Stefano De Michelis, and maybe okay. with uh, Fabrizio uh, Germano, right? Uh, and then the title was A Simple Geometry of uh, Perfect Information Games, I think, something like that. <laughs> Okay, I, I look at it. I, I, yeah, Arcadic, yes. You can also look at uh, there's a paper by Lucas Powell and uh, Harry Govinton and uh, someone else. I, I don't quite remember the title. If you look on Lucas's page, I'm sure it's there where they give a, a finite uh, sum of algebraic characterization of perfect equilibria. Uh -huh. It's a pretty recent paper. The PAL, P A H L. Uh, thank you, John. Any more questions, comments? So, Guillaume, thank you very much. Thank you, Elon. Thank you all, and we will meet again in two weeks. Thank you.